I never learn. It's always too hot. Hey guys, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another Girl Talk Q&A. I feel like I haven't done one of these in a while, so I'm excited to do one of these once again. I got my tea right here. It's a little too hot right now, and I am just going to hop into the questions. There's a lot of like marriage related questions so i guess we'll just start off with those ones i got a few like how does it feel like being married what's it like being married so i've been married for like a little bit over a year like a year and what like a month or two months so it hasn't been too long but i would say married life and single life are both so different being married i personally love it like, i feel like it can be such a beautiful thing i love like having like free the round with me and just like building that connection with him and I feel like every day like is like cliche as this sounds I like love him more and more every day it's just so nice to just have someone be there for you like be your support on your bad days on your good days being married you obviously will have some days that are like harder and tougher on you guys but overall I would say it's like an amazing thing and I love it personally I don't know what else to really say about it other than that does it matter if a guy you're going to marry has a past would you still marry him I personally think it doesn't matter as long as the person has repented the past is between them in Los Panatala as long as it is in the past if it's not actually in the past then that's like a different thing but if they really like, truly have repented and it is like a thing in the past then I don't see anything wrong with it and I don't see why like the relationship wouldn't work as long as that person has repented from their past and they know that it was like a mistake it was something wrong when you say past I think that like, you're referring to like haram past I feel like everyone has like a very different perspective on this and some people are okay with it and some people aren't and you just have to decide for yourself if you're okay with it and if you can live with that like knowing that this person had a past but I feel like that's also something you shouldn't go into detail about you shouldn't inquire more and more about you should just leave it till the with Allah and if that person has repented from that past and like who are you to judge them you know like that's between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so as long as they've repented is what I'm trying to say and it really is in the past I don't see a problem with it I wouldn't have a problem with it personally but it's like completely up to you you know what if your husband is so interested in looking at other naked girls on social media that's a big no-no <laughs> like men have their own hijab they're supposed to lower their gaze if you're in this situation and you're already married to this person and you found out that they look at half naked girls on social media like you can have a conversation with them about it why it bothers you whatever but at the end of the day they shouldn't be doing that marriage advice when moving in together Ooh. okay so you have to be ready to like i mean everyone's different but in like my way i like things like a particular way i feel like i'm very like a clean freak kind of and so things that would bug me in the beginning is like when freed would do things like a little differently uh, but also like just having a conversation with your spouse about like the things that like you really cannot stand like i hate when freed brings like outside clothes into our bedroom i just cannot stand that like please put on some clean clothes and then get into the bed you know what i mean like outside clothes or for the outside i don't know if you guys agree with me on that because he in the beginning did not care about that he would just like go into the bed with his jeans on and i'm like ew like why that's disgusting and then i was like washing the sheets like every other day because of that and then he realizes now and thankfully now he changes before he gets into the bed but like just like little things like that you'll find will bug you maybe potentially i mean i'm just talking about my case um a little disclaimer i should have said this at the beginning of the video but take everything i say with a grain of salt i'm just speaking on my experiences and yeah yeah i would say just like be understanding of the other person and realize like everyone was brought up a different way and um kind of just like have conversations when things bother you in my like case that was like the main thing for me was like for its outside clothes it's usually just like little things that will like irritate you and bother you and then you can just like speak to your partner about it and then usually once you speak to them they'll hopefully be understanding about whatever it is and like vice versa like if something you do bothers them and like your cleanliness or whatever it is yeah that would be my advice is to just not be so like a control freak because i feel like i was a little 
Oh, I'm getting better, but yeah. <laughs> How can a woman know for sure that a man is serious about intending to marry later on? I would say this is like pretty obvious to spot. Like if they like right off the bat are okay with talking to your parents, that is how you know they are actually serious. I feel like you definitely need to get your parents involved from the very beginning to not like have any haram stuff going on. And like that's how you'll know like what their true intentions are. I feel like it shouldn't be like just because you introduce someone to your parents that you have to marry them like just to protect yourself from haram i feel like it is very important to at least tell your parents or like the guy should come and meet your parents and like i feel like if a guy talks to you and he's like oh i want to make you my future wife or i want to do this like some guys like will talk like that but they don't do like anything to actually make that happen they don't come to meet your parents they don't like take any initiative that is like to me like they're not really serious about it they're just trying to do like her own things and just kind of like string you along or keep you as a backup or whatever it is so i think it's really important that you get your parents involved from the very beginning and that is how you'll know that the guy is actually like serious about being married um if he like you know tells his parents as well introduces you to them and etc so yeah is marriage what you imagined i would say it's better than what i imagined like overall looking at it i would say it ended up being better than I thought it would have been, in my opinion. It's completely different from what I imagined, but it's better, in my opinion, if that makes sense. Currently struggling to get over someone who I know isn't good for me, but the attachment is still there. I've blocked him, yet I still feel like apologizing, even though I know he wasn't the one. So, like you already said, like you already know he's not the one for you, and you've blocked him, but you've feel like apologizing that's just the shaitan trying to like reel you back in to this thing that isn't good for you because i feel like as soon as you know and you have that gut feeling that something isn't good for you you should just like stay away from it and i think like like you don't owe this person anything you don't need to apologize to them i think just move on with your life there's no need to talk to them when you already know like it's not gonna work out like you're just gonna attach yourself further to the person and open like more conversation to happen that doesn't need to happen and i think it's great that you block this person and it's okay that it's like a struggle but i think the best thing for you to do because you know that this person is not the one for you is just to like cut off all the ties with this person keep them blocked don't like try to talk to them again just because you feel bad or whatever just know that those thoughts are probably from the shaytha and just trying to reel you back into whatever that relationship was i'll get into like the pregnancy related questions now there's a lot of those as well how are you feeling when you know that you are carrying a life inside of you honestly it feels so like surreal and it doesn't feel like real like i don't feel like there's like actually like a life inside of me but now that i've like started to feel kicks and things like that like now it's kind of hard to ignore that like i'll forget i'm pregnant i'll feel a kick and i'm like oh yeah there's like a baby inside of me like it's such a like surreal experience for sure and i feel like the biggest thing like with being pregnant i've felt like i'm not actually pregnant like am i really pregnant like just constantly questioning that or like just feeling like i'm not pregnant and like alhamdulillah it's been pretty like smooth sailing in my second trimester and i haven't had like any really bad side effects or anything like that so for me i like forget that i'm pregnant a lot of the times but recently i've noticed myself getting out of breath a lot faster as my belly is growing and stuff and i'm gaining weight so are you nervous to deliver your baby yes i am so nervous for this this is like the thing that i my whole life have like always thought about and just been so scared about like delivering a baby but i'm like i don't know i'm not really doing anything to like prepare myself for it like mentally i haven't but i just keep reminding myself like you know Allah gave us the ability to do this everyone does it it can't be that bad and also like we have like you know epidurals and things like that but honestly the epidural itself scares me like just the like how big that needle is that even scares me yeah i'm just i'm scared but once it's like happening like i can't do anything about it like the baby has to come out it can't just stay inside of me forever and like what is me being scared going to do about it like i am scared but alhamdulillah i have Farid with me <laughs> he'll help me through it i guess i'm definitely very very scared for this and i'm like a little anxious about the fact of like giving birth and like you know obviously i've never done it before so i have no idea what to expect all i keep hearing are like horror stories but i have heard some like positive birth stories as well so i am hoping that inshallah everything is fine and it's not as bad as i think it is but we will see i have about like three more months 
to go which is so crazy time is going by really fast but i feel like three months is still like a long time so i definitely have some time to like prepare myself like i'll be fine inshallah how does it feel like to pray while being pregnant with no monthly break it feels so weird to not have like a week off like i feel like as girls we're so used to like getting our you know monthly and having that week off from prayer and stuff and not having that has been so weird but it was like the first like two months that it was weird for me and then i got used to it are you ready for motherhood i don't think i can like fully prepare myself and be ready for that till it comes like you know you learn as you go you can like do as much research as you want but till you're like actually in it i feel like it'll be a lot different but i am very excited for this baby to come and i'm ready for it i would say but like I can never really be ready like I'm pretty sure there'll be a whole lot of more challenges and things like that but I will take you guys along <laughs> whatever that journey is with me and we can learn together <laughs> for those of you that are also going through this period in your life are you moving to a bigger apartment when slash before baby comes will you have a nursery so we don't plan on moving until like our lease ends um, and I think by the time our lease ends the baby will be about four months old which he'll still be pretty small and I feel like babies don't usually use like nurseries or like I don't know from what I've seen I feel like people don't really use like their nursery room till like the baby's at least like a year or two old so I don't feel the need to like move out to like a bigger place as of right now when the lease is up inshallah we will look for like a different place I don't think we want to stay in this apartment because it's like right next to like the school and stuff and inshallah by the time at least is done i should be done with school so we do plan on moving somewhere but we just don't know exactly where yet um or what we're going to be doing um we'll find out more closer to when that time comes but as of now we do plan on staying in this apartment i just plan on getting like a small little like bassinet for the first few months of the baby's life i feel like i'll just have that by my bedside and it should be good something like that we'll think about it we'll see um but yeah i don't mind like living in a small space and the baby is going to be small he won't start crawling or anything like that yet so should be fine inshallah here let's move on from the pregnancy questions and let's get into some other kinds of questions how was your journey for wearing the hijab any advice for starting it so if you are someone who is thinking of starting to wear the hijab i would say just go for it like you will not regret it or i mean i never regretted it i remember like i had the thought that i wanted to wear hijab and i kept going back and forth with it and then like the day that i decided to like actually wear it i remember feeling like oh my gosh no like i don't want to do this what did i get myself into and i remember i had told a friend that i was going to wear it so that made me like like okay let me at least like try it out and I feel like that's like one of the biggest things you should do is like try it out. It's honestly not as bad as you think. I feel like I think back at it and I'm like, why was I so scared to wear the hijab? Honestly though, when I'm like in my classes and whatnot, I am usually like the only hijabi everywhere I go for the most part. Sometimes I'll see like other hijabis. So that is like what would scare me is like being the only hijabi and just like looking super different from everyone else. You just like learn to love it. I will just say just go for it, try it out, start wearing it like here and there even and see how you feel and inshallah like you'll gain that love for it and just like constantly making dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the hijab something easy for you. I feel like makes the world of a difference. <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to do one last question, so I'll just do this one. Does it sometimes get hard wearing hijab and you see all these other girls with cute fits? For me, yes, that's why I'm asking. I personally don't find it hard uh, when I see like other girls wearing cute fits like without the hijab because to me, I'm like, if I want to wear that, I'll wear it at home for myself. Like, I don't need to go out and show the world that outfit or whatever, you know, just look good for yourself. So that's why I feel like it doesn't really bother me and also just like, I feel like if you're constantly like focusing on that thing then it makes sense as to why it would bother you just focus on like other hijabis and getting cute outfits with your hijab and like feeling confident in your hijab and stuff like that i feel like that makes like the world of a difference so yeah i hope that helped <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this girl talk q a inshallah i will continue on doing these like once a month or something like that so yeah i usually just ask the questions over on my instagram so do follow me on there if you are not and you'd like to ask any questions for the girl talk q a but other than that i hope you guys enjoyed if you are not subscribed do hit that subscribe button and i will see you guys in my next video bye